Now, before the ad break, we looked at paper number two, or we looked at paper number two at question two, which was organic chemistry. And for question number three, it's a continuation of organic chemistry, but also bringing in some of the intermolecular forces and rates of reactions which we do in grade 11. Now, just to overview this a little bit, firstly, you must go through your grade 11 work for your rates of reactions and intermolecular forces. Remember, the, the size of the molecule, the functional group that it has, and the intermolecular forces that it has will actually determine the rate of the reaction. Remember, we always want rates quick and fast and so forth, but you have to explain why will one be faster, one, why will one be slower in terms of the molecular shape, size, the functional group in which it's in, as well as the intermolecular forces. If your question is for four marks, the examiner is looking for, two, for four points. Most of the time, these questions ask for comparison, where they're like, um, between number A and number B, which one will be faster? Then you have to say, A has got these forces, B has these forces, that's why A will be faster. A has got five chains, where B has this, that's why A will be faster. The examiner is looking for a comparison, whether you do understand that the molecular shape, the functional group, homologous series, as well as the intermolecular forces in the molecule will then determine the rate of the reaction. Whew, that's a mouthful. But go through your grade 11 work if you are a bit confused. But nonetheless, let's answer this question. Question number three says, the relationship between a boiling point and the number of carbon atoms in a straight chain molecules, we've got, they've given us the homologous series of aldehydes. Now I know that aldehydes will have a double bond O. Alkanes will only have single chains. And then we've got alcohols is investigated. Now, can really see just by me looking at it that alcohols will then have um, hydrogen bonds, which we know that are the strongest intermolecular forces. Then we, have, we are given curve number A and C, which are obtained. Just by me looking at this diagram, I can see that A has got a very high boiling point, then B, then C. That means that A will have stronger intermolecular forces than B and also than C, but B will have stronger intermolecular, intermolecular forces than C. As well as on the x-axis, we are given the number of carbons that they have. Now remember, yeah, they've given us a clue to say everything is in a straight chain. So now the first one, number 3.1, define the term boiling point. A definition must always be the same, not an explanation, but the definition. Now, if you are struggling with the definition for boiling point, look through grade 10 content. This is the temperature. At which, at which the vapor pressure at which the vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. They love this definition. So I'd always say, please know it. And I mean, it's for two marks and we cannot fail because we are lazy to read. Number 3.2 says we must write down the structural formula formula for the functional group of aldehydes. Now, they're not looking for an aldehyde in a straight chain. They're just looking for the structural formula for aldehydes. Remember, an aldehyde will be a C with an H. It will have a double bond O there, and then it will be attached to anything else. Most of you guys confuse aldehydes with ketones. A ketone, the double bond O is between two carbons, where an aldehyde, the Double bond O is on the last carbon. Think of A for in the alphabets, the first carbon, also to also be on that one. Number 3.3, .3, the graph shows that the boiling points increase as the number of carbons atoms increase and fully explain this trend. Let's go back to the graph. So the number of carbons increase as the boiling point also increases. And I can see A, B, and C are both are all increasing, right? So now we need to explain this trend. Now, if you are going to explain a trend, you must talk in terms of the boiling points with an increase in the number of carbon chains. Remember to use full sentences and show the examiner that you know exactly what you're talking about. So when we're increasing carbon atoms, 
see atoms. This means the more carbon atoms we have, the molecular size, the molecular size will increase. Or you could have said chain length because they did say chain length. But it just shows that four is greater than three or six will be much greater than four. And when we have a greater size and it's a longer length, it means more energy. More energy is needed. More energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces. To overcome, overcome intermolecular forces. Which makes sense because 2 will be much more easier to break than 10. But if they gave you 50, you'd need more energy to break 50 carbon chains. So the bigger the molecular size, more energy is needed to overcome intermolecular forces. Don't just say energy, right? Don't just say more energy. You must say more energy is needed to overcome intermolecular forces. And if there's more energy needed to overcome intermolecular forces, there's an increase in the intermolecular force strength. There is an increase in the strength, in the strength of the intermolecular forces, which makes sense to break four carbon in a chain. You're going to need more energy if you're going to break 10. You're not going to use the same energy as if you were breaking four. So when we increase carbon atoms, the molecular size or the chain length will increase. When that gets bigger, more energy is needed to overcome because six is much more greater to break than two. When we have an increase in the intermolecular forces, we have an increase in strength because breaking four is much more easier than having to break 16. So always think about it like this. For three marks, the examiner was looking at that. And you know what, how I always teach my children? I always teach my children as think of the chain length growing. If it grows, the size grows. Obviously, when the size grows, it gets heavier. When it gets heavier, you need more energy. If you need more energy, you need more strength, right? So always put them in that order. Then you are less likely to make mistakes. So three marks, three points, and the examiner wants to see whether you can actually articulate what is then going to happen. Number 3.4, it says... Identify the curve A, B, or C that represents the following. The one with compounds with London forces only. Remember, London forces are actually the weakest intermolecular forces that we have. So let's see. On the graph, which one will represent London forces, the weakest intermolecular forces? That means it will be number C. It has the lowest boiling point. Low boiling point means it's very easy to just... Um, break apart. So I'm here, London forces, that will be number C. Now, they just did say A, B, or C. They didn't ask whether it's an aldehyde and so forth. Please do not make that mistake. Number 3.4.2 says identify the curve that represents the aldehydes in this one. Now remember, we have, we have London forces, which will be the weakest, all the heights have to be the second one, and all the heights will usually have dipole dipole forces, right? And number A will then have to be our primary alcohol where we will have hydrogen bonds. So, which means that all the heights will then have to be number B if number C is then our London forces. London forces are the weakest, and then dipole dipole forces, and then our hydrogen bonds will always be the strongest. Now it also says we need to explain our answer. First, I, might, I must identify. So all the heights will be represented by number B. How do I know this? All the heights, remember to write full out. All the heights, they have dipole dipole forces. I just want to write it like this. Dipole dipole. If you are struggling with your intermolecular forces, I would say take it back to grade 11, where you actually go through all your intermolecular forces and then come back and try this one. Dipole dipole forces, which are stronger, definitely, dipole dipole forces are stronger than London forces. 
Remember, London forces are number C, which are the weakest intermolecular forces. So dipole-dipole forces, which are stronger than London forces, but weaker than, but they are weaker than hydrogen bonds, which is the number A. Hydrogen bonds are the strongest. It'll then be the strongest. Another thing, this was for four marks, you could have said, how do you know that these are aldehydes? This, we know that aldehydes, aldehydes have a lower boiling point. We'll have a lower boiling point than alcohols. Alcohols will be right there on top but it will be but higher but a, but higher boiling point boiling point than all kings a higher boiling point than all kings so how do we know these are aldehydes and this was for four marks aldehydes have dipole dipole forces which are stronger than London forces, but weaker than hydrogen bonds. Can you see I've already made a comparison between A, B, and C by just uh, stating it out there. Dipole, dipole, London forces, and hydrogen bonds. And I put them in order um, from strong to weak, indicating which one is strong to weak. All the ions also have a lower boiling point than alcohols, but they are higher, they have a higher boiling point than then alkanes. That is then how you would have answered that question. Number 3.5, it says use the information in the graph and write down the IUPAC name. Remember, this is a system that we use to actually name organic molecules with the boiling point of 373. Now we are told, just by mere looking at this table, we need to use this table. Let me just go all the way up for number A. I can see that then therefore, for number A, the IUPAC name that it will have will then be butanol. IUPAC name for 373, which will then be butanol. And then let's do number six. Write down the IUPAC name once again of the compound containing five carbons. I know five is represented by pent, by five carbons, which has the lowest vapor pressure at a given temperature. I can see the lowest vapor pressure. Low vapor pressure means high boiling point, which will then be pentane one all. And that is then how I would have answered number 3.6. And this is how I would have answered the whole of question three. Again, I was given a diagram and all the answers that I've answered came from the diagram. You do know, have to know some of the properties and some of the functions on when, what works with how, and also know how to explain. With this concept of rates of reaction, the examiner wants to see whether you do know that when a molecule grows, what happens to the intermolecular forces, as well as bringing in grade 11 content that you're expected to know. But